Hey guys, it's Salomon here. After last week's ranked melee video, it's time to cover the awesome and fabulous ranged. Which, let's be honest, more than 80% of the people is gonna be warlocks. Like in the melee ranked, we're gonna talk about which specs are the most fun for me and most well-rounded designs. In short, which specs Blizzard decided to put more love into. Am I right? As a last note, all of this is based on gameplay as numbers are not final yet and can easily change over the course of the beta. Now before going into any spec, let's talk about the changes that affect all ranged DPS at this point in time. Like in the melee, the overarching change is a global cooldown, basically that very short cooldown that you get when you click an ability. In Legion, some abilities were absent of that rule, such as DPS cooldowns, defensives, mobility, however in PFA most cooldowns now have that global cooldown integrated into them, preventing you to click, say, Icy Veins on your Frost Mage and immediately send a spell, making your gameplay slightly slower, but currently it's in the state of where it isn't too bad. Tolerable, but not ideal. However, that is just my opinion and that is subjective. The line where it is applied is rather thin, so in the description you can find a link to Wowhead showing all of the abilities that are now on this global cooldown change. Along with with that, you can find some other links such as class buffs that some specs get back, like the intellect one on the mages, and the timings to each spec is listed here also as this probably will be a pretty long video. Spoiler alert though. The other big change of course is a squish to our item level and stats, so say goodbye to your millions of hits and crits, and most of your artifact goodies and legendary effects are mostly gone. Some do come back in the form of talents or some lucky ones as baseline, but you can obviously find feel forced in comparison to Legion. All of that said, let's get started. Starting with the Shadow Priest. Like enhancement in the melee ranked, this came at no surprise. Shadow had an issue coming out of Legion. We are worthless without Void Form. So let's try to fix it, says Blizzard. Alright, fair enough. But then the result was a spec that was being worked on but then time ran out and this is what we get. A half working spec that just got its numbers bumped up to actually make it functional. A similar treatment enhancement gotten recently. So if that's the only thing that you care about, sure, feel free to put Shadow up there with the big boys, but in terms of gameplay, not so much. Now the core of the spec, when you look at your spellbook, it looks the same. You have almost the same abilities, void form mechanic still here, but then when you start playing it, you notice that void form is so much slower. And that staying in void form is not something really that viable, especially in AoE. It's more beneficial not to use your void form at times and instead save it for later because the best thing out of it is avoid eruption damage. So I saw myself at times purposely running out of void form just so I could do more void eruptions or just delay void form itself in dungeons. If that isn't absurdly counterintuitive in its design, I don't know what is. Void Eruption did change, by the way, as it no longer requires dots to damage, instead just damages all targets in a 10 yard area, but we did get Mind Seer back which fixes our awful single target switching for Mind Flay in AoE. Furthermore, in single target, Void Form is no longer this fun and exciting mechanic, but more like a nuisance. Getting high stacks is simply impossible, Void Bolts no longer feels as meaningful, even the dot refresh feels handicapped, all because again in effort to fix quote unquote the Void Form issue, but in the process the holes that it left simply weren't filled. Then there's your talents, which I must warn you if you've never seen them, please take caution. For any Shadow Priest, seeing this talent tree just feels like this cold knife just stabbed us on our back. Shadow Word Death? Really? You do get your artifact ability here as well, which you would think should be baseline. But remember, Void Form is no longer this thing you want up as much as you can, so doesn't really matter. Your Shadow Word Void turned to be much like your Waste Lego and in turn made the Shadow Insight proc more compelling and it's an interesting choice to make between these two. Dark Void is a new ability to help with your AoE, a bit bursty and applying Shadow Word Pain on all targets, so really good for dungeons, along with Shadow Crash down here, actually usable now, but goes against Shadow Wars Death, which just feels like a god-awful choice to make. 
Mindbender still here, however Shadow Fiends now gives 3 Insanity baseline, so this just makes it to have a shorter cooldown and give double the Insanity. And again, Void Form isn't really a thing anymore, so why pick it anyway? You get Legacy of the Void again, slightly different, but still the same idea, and a new one, Dark Ascension, which is fine, again gives you more burst, a cooldown to instantly activate Void Form, dealing a Void Eruption in damage and granting 50 Insanity. In AoE, it's fine is an bursty option for single target is kind of weird but it works you can take advantage of lingering insanity to stack up some haste because you can use it while in void form already it just resets the stacks but by far it doesn't fix the issue in shadow it's just more burst like shadow crash or even dark void to some extent provide Surrender to Madness just feels kind of useless now, but also was nerfed. Only lasts for one minute, doesn't kill you when it ends, but prevents heals and is on a global cooldown. Yeah. Overall, Shadow Priest feels like a dot class that is quite bursty. That's the sentence I thought I would never say. That said, what could fix Shadow, you say? Well, like most people suggested in the amazing feedback the community provided, my favorite suggestion was to just turn Void Forum into a cooldown. Simple, much like the Breath of Cinegrossa works. Rest of the spec could just go back to being this dot class, maybe add something like the old orbs mechanic. Your talents, though, would have to change a lot, but that would be a good thing. Currently, though, its talent choices and even gameplay just feels messed up, like when you put your earphones on your pocket and get the wires all tangled up. That's probably the most accurate visual representation of what Shadow went through in BFA, but hopefully gets all fixed up in 8.1. One can hope. The Arcane Mage. Arcane in Legion was the only mage spec that never got its time in the sun. It got close, but never really got there. It did have its niche around uh, burst AoE, and in terms of gameplay, it had its complexities between your mana and arcane charges management, which made the spec quite interesting, but not for everybody. And AoE, even though was pretty great, was pretty much arcane explosion spam with some barrages mixed in. And in BFA, it was mostly stripped of those same complexities, essentially streamlined, and in turn lost its depth. It sure is more easy to play, but also far more boring. On top, you also lost all the traits and artifact ability, which further reduces what made Arcane interesting. Now, what made Arcane more streamlined was the changes around on how your Arcane charges work with some abilities. In Legion, most abilities were connected to them one way or another, but now Arcane Missiles is literally just a proc that doesn't benefit from Arcane charges nor generates them, so there's nothing to it besides you get it and use it. But it does use mana now. Arcane Explosion still does generate charges, but the damage and mana isn't increased from them. Now there are good changes, such as the Missiles proc, which is now named Clear Casting, can also be used with Arcane Explosion, and Arcane Blast got its Temporal Flux talent baked into it to increase the cast speed by 8% per charge. Although Mastery also got nerfed to fit with these changes, as now only affects Arcane Blast and Barrage. So again, far more simple but lost a lot of its flair. On Talents you did get some new things but nothing overly exciting. On the first tier you get Amplification to make missiles send one more when Glittercast and Rule of Threes when you get a third charge. Your next Arcane Blast or missiles are free of mana. Your Chrono Shift is now an Arcane Barrage thing to add a slow and give you a movement speed buff by 50%. Here you got one of the your best traits in AoE, Touch of the Magi, casting Arcane Explosion has a 10% chance to accumulate 20% of your damage to then deal all of it after 8 seconds. Now it applies on a target, so in dungeons if it was applied on a low HP target, say goodbye to that sweet damage. Reverberate is by far more functional if Arcane Explosion hits 3 targets, which is when you want to use it anyway. It has a 50% chance to get an extra charge. Since Arcane Explosion no longer benefits from charges, you no longer have the option to, say, stay at max charges and just burn your mana for a big burst. It still deals good damage but feels just as a way to build charges to then dump on barrages, which is where most of your damage is gonna come from, as you can probably see in the background. Again, easier 
but duller. In the last tier, you only get a new choice, Time Anomaly, which is a fun talent, but really RNG based. At any moment, you can get Arcane Power for 10 seconds, Evocation for 1, or gain 4 charges. This can literally proc at any moment, even out of combat, so at times, if you are lucky, it's amazing. Other times, getting an evocation when you add max mana isn't all that great, right? So I don't know how valuable this can be, but the RNG of it is extremely unreliable. But when it works, it works well. So overall, Arcane is just quite boring right now, AoE is mostly Arcane Explosion and Barrages, like I said, and Single Target is mostly spamming Arcane Blast, Manage Mana a bit, and then Barrages, and Rinse and repeat. Again, for the most part, you can take some active talents like Arcan Orb to add some spice, and Arcan Power is still a fun cooldown to use, but nothing too special. Contrary to Shadow Priest, Arcane isn't having an identity crisis, but it does need to get something else to get it going, as right now it lost most of its appeal. Then up next, there is the Elemental Shaman, which like this other two, an enhancement, is one of those specs that did get some changes, but those mixed in with the loss of artifact got a bit messy and more boring. But contrary to Shadow and even Arcane, I feel there's a few things you can do here that offer some enjoyment in terms of gameplay. So for the most part, when you look at it, it stayed the same. It's only when you start reading those nasty little tooltips, you see the changes and you ask yourself, but why? So starting with a good change, Lava Burst no longer requires a Flame Shock to crit. Now this is great as it allows you to change targets easily without punishing you, but then Flame Shock has a cooldown of 6 seconds, making multi-dotting a much tougher endeavor, however no longer uses Maelstrom. Then we get to the Maelstrom generation and here is where the spec gets dragged down in the dirt. Well first of all, your Maelstrom generation was cut in half, it is now displayed as a passive called Full nation, and as you can see your abilities are generating much less. That wouldn't be too much of a problem, but then you also got the changes to your two spenders, Earthshock and Earthquake, which now cost more, Earthquake at 75 and Earthshock at also 75. In Legion, Earthshock was sort of a dynamic ability that you could use anywhere between 10 to 100. It added some depth and even though yes there was a perfect moment to use it, when you took Legos and other effects in mind, made the ability more interesting. All of this ended up making the spec slow down to a crawl. In AoE it does take huge effort to even put an earthquake out, something that in Legion was quick and spammy, here takes quite a toll on you to even put the single one and say goodbye to it if the tank decides to move the mobs away from it. And in single target you still have the issue that Echo of the Elements is still not baseline, making the use of Lava Burst procs annoying if you're trying to maximize. Not only that, Lava Burst in Legion provided a quite a lot of interesting things from traits. Here just more Maelstrom and a bit more damage in comparison to Lightning Bolt. So what you will end up doing is just build and dump Maelstrom on Earth Shocks, build to 75 and dump, in this very repetitive, slow and boring cycle. Now another good change though was on your Fire Elemental Pet, not only you get an awesome new model, but now it's actually giving you some benefits, giving you 3 Maelstrom every time Flame Shock takes. Other baseline changes was the comeback from Tremor Totem, which is cool as it gives you more utility, and Frost Shock no longer costs Maelstrom as well, so it's almost an ability that you can spam on a move or to make Ice Fury playstyle better. Now, in your talents like Shadow, you get a tree where you just look at it and you wonder in awe. Like I said previously, Echo of the Elements is practically a must to manage your Lava Burst better. It makes your gameplay far more interesting, so you really need to take it, but then you have Elemental Blast here now, really? This just feels like an awful choice to make, between one ability that you have to take because it fixes your gameplay, and this other which is added some spice to the spec overall to use on cooldown, while now you just have to choose quote unquote. With that you get exposed elements, which is new. Earth Shock now increases the damage of your next lightning bolt to the target by doubling it. Nothing special, but it works. Aftershock was changed to now refund all the costs of Maelstrom costing abilities, which feels clunkier than the Legion version, as now can lead to weird overcapping moments when you decide to use an Earth Shock close to the cap, and it procs, and you have, say, a Lava Burst proc as well, then you end up making this weird decision where you either overcap 
or you don't and you lose out on potential procs. Master of the Elements to make your Lava Burst grant you a buff to increase the damage of your next Nature or Frost spell by 20%, which is nice but makes the thing about sending two Lava Bursts in a row something that you never want to do, even though you should do when you are casting one and you get a proc at the same time, leading to weird decisions again. Earth Shield is here as well, kinda weird but serves as a self-heal thing. And High Voltage here to make your Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning grant an extra overload, which helps overall but is just a passive. As for your Storm Elemental, as changed, now casting Lightning Bolts while it's active increases its cast time and its stacks. Uh, some talent shuffling here, on the last tier you get Storm Keeper, which is your artifact ability but nerfed, as it only affects two spells now and it doesn't increase the damage like it did in Legion. And unlimited power, which is alright, each overload stacks up a buff to increase haste by 2%, again not much you can do with it but helps your gameplay to make it slightly faster. All in all, elemental works, but it's not only slower but it lost some depth and it's interesting gameplay mechanics that came from traits, Lego effects and the way your spenders worked. You can still have some fun here though, that's why it's above those other two. Your spells are still fun to use due to their aesthetics, sound effects and how they work, like your chain lightning, sending lightning everywhere is still pretty goddamn fun. And that can carry the spec a bit, but when you really look at it, it just feels like a husk in comparison to Legion. The Beast Mastery Hunter. Well, what's there to say about it, besides inserting all the possible memes at how easy it is to play? But that said, it still is that simple spec that you know, as in you don't have to think about it much, you can just enjoy the fight, focus on the mechanics while not worrying too much about what you're doing because the PS, for the most part, is gonna come out. If you think about it like that, you can enjoy it. Even myself, so it does feel a niche. Now in PFA, the question that you probably want the most answered is, can you still have Hari? Well, you can. It's a talent now called Animal Companion. When you have a pet active, it summons your first pet from your stables, so rest assured. Other baseline changes is on your Cobra Shots, now reduces kill command CD by 1 second, making it a bit more interesting, plus Dire Beast was replaced with the way your Dire Frenzy talent worked, even though now it's an arrow, adding a bleed dot, sending your pet into a frenzy to increase attack speed and it stacks 3 times, again just like Dire Frenzy, called Barbed Shot. Since it's like Dire Frenzy, Wild Call procs gonna give more barb shots and you want to have this buff active as much as you can, so you're gonna delay it sometimes to just extend its duration. This ability is the most complex-ish mechanic you're gonna find on BM. And of course, it still reduces the Bestial Wrath CD and gives focus over time. Your pets overall change a bit as well, for one you gain a command pet thing, kinda like the locks, gaining an ability depending on your pet's talent type, if ferocity you get the bloodlust, tenacity reducing damage taken and cunning master's call for your pet to charge back to you. You can find a link down below to check all of those pet changes as is too much to cover here. Now, on talents you get your dire beast pack, but it's just a sort of cooldown now, but also granting 10% haste. Uh, your animal companion that I already talked about, and a way for your kill command to sort of work like an execute. A scent of blood here to increase the focus granted by barb shot, much like in Legion for a dire beast. A venomous bite to make your cobra shot reduce the cooldown of bestial wrath by 1 second. Thrill of the hunt for barb shot grants a crit buff, stacking 3 times. If you optimize barb shots for the attack speed buff, this is gonna stay up along with it. A stampede is now in the same row as stomp, although stomp now comes from your own pet only when you use barb shot. And then on the last year you get speeding cobra from survival, a new pet basically that grants you focus every 2 seconds, as a cooldown is pretty good to go along with bestial wrath, an aspect of the beast to overall increase pet damage by 30% and increase the effectiveness of its passive buffs, such as a leech buff that I have from my current pet. All in all, again, Beast Mastery still is that simple spec that you know, you do get a few new toys, but core gameplay wise still works the same, you just get that dire frenzy playstyle built in 
the Balance Druid. Balance, along with some other specs, did receive this sort of revamp in BFI, because let's be honest, they really needed it coming in from Legion. There, if you didn't have proper Legos and if you weren't a wing, it was extremely stale, with this very simplistic builder and spender type of gameplay based on astral power. Your artifact ability did help, and I'm glad to say that is back, but it's a talent, which sucks, but at least it's here, right? Now, what were the main changes to make balance a bit more exciting? Well, your lunar and solar empowerment for the most part, which are still granted by Star Surge, but can now proc off each other on a 20% chance from a passive called Eclipse. This essentially adds some unpredictability on those empowerments and you're not so reliant on those same Star Surges. Plus, solar empowerment now also makes your solar wrath explode for 10% of its damage. Damage. As for your CD, Celestial Alignment changed slightly as well, now just increases the damage and haste by 15% for 20 seconds. The haste does help, but won't change much as your trait gave you anyway, although now is more uh, streamlined. Your mastery also changed a bit as now continues to improve the damage of your empowerments, star surges and starfall, but also all of your dots, like moonfire, sunfire and even stellar flare. Talents also changed a bit as well. Force of Nature now grants 20 astral power. The Warrior of Elune, Lunar Strikes now grant 40% more astral power as well. And Nature's Balance is now here, kind of working like the old Blessing of Ancients to grant 2 astral power every 3 seconds while in combat, or if out of combat, your astral power won't go below 50, which does help when there's long pauses in dungeons or world stuff. Tiger Dash to replace this Placer Beast to give you a big burst of speed. Incarnation here now just to increase the damage to 25% from 15% and lasts for 30 seconds, up from 20. As for Star Lords, Star Surge and Star Fall grant a 3% haste buff for 20 seconds, stacking up 3 times. Considering the 20 second timer is not something that you overly gonna think about, once you get your rotation going, you will naturally stack it up and maintain it. Stellar Drifts is still works the same, just changed tiers and was a bit nerfed, Twin Moons made its way from the Lego shoulders to make your Moonfire cleave, and Stellar Flare now grants 8 astral power. So basically, cleaving choices against pure AoE. Then on the last tier you get talents that improve your astral power, like your moons, uh, still working the same, uh, shooting stars to get 2 astral power on Moonfire or Sunfire ticks, and Fury of Elune which changed and is now a cooldown on 1 minute, damaging all around in this awesome moonbeam for 8 seconds and granting 40 astral power during its duration. Overall, don't be disencouraged that balance is on number 7, because it is playing better than in Legion. Single targets could still improve a bit, but again, in general, it's more engaging and interesting to play with all those changes, and if you didn't like it in Legion, I would advise to give it another shot, and if you did and you are planning on manning it again, you win luck. The Marksmanship Hunter. Like Balance, it also went through a sort of revamp, and no longer you have that vulnerable window crap to user aim shots, which was cool in theory, but in practice felt more like it was forcing you to do things that sometimes you didn't want it to do, and that's not fun. It also sucked for target switching, among other issues. Now, first of all, your pet has been mostly removed from the equation. The number of people actually using one was extremely small. So what they decided to do is give Lone Wolf baseline, but you can technically still call a pet, it will just simply reduce your damage. But for outdoor stuff, you can still perfectly use one to serve as a tank or something. Plus, if no pet is active on top of the damage increase, you gain a 20% damage reduction buff. Now, marked shot is also gone, and the way your aim shot works is just as a pretty long castable shot, costing a 30 focus that hits really hard, but you have two charges, and additionally, grants this proc called precise shots. Those can be one to two. That will allow 
allow your next melee shot or arcane shot to deal double the damage. Now, your arcane shot is no longer your way to get focus, is now a focus costing ability. At 15, that is spellable. On itself, it's pretty weak and you primarily want to use with those same procs, but you can also use it to dump excess focus. Multi shot fills that same role, costs the same focus, but you're gonna be using it when AoEing instead. On top, when multi shot hits three targets, it grants you the trick shots buff, making your next aim shot to sort of spread damage to five targets at 50% of the damage. So you're gonna be using those abilities back to back to AoE. Rapid fire can also work with this buff but only spreads to two targets. Now, rapid fire on itself is on a short cooldown and you just start firing multiple arrows. Not gonna lie, feels a bit weird on a bow as it feels you firing a machine gun, but it's gonna grant you focus in the process and deals pretty decent damage, plus usable while moving. And lastly, you get your new slash old filler steady shot, just a simple way to get 10 focus back when nothing else to do, plus also usable while moving. Your mobility in general was improved quite a lot, as you can see. And overall, you know, you have a shot for any situation, making you really feel like a marksman, not just as an aim shot horror. Well, to some extent, but you're gonna be switching between shots quite regularly. True Shot also changed a lot, now grants a charge for your aim shot, plus gives 30% haste to do them all shots faster. In Talons, various changes came as well to fit with this revamp. Besides some shuffling here, Serpent's Thing is back, so you can have some dot damage, or Master Marksman, so aim shot reduces the cost of your next Arcane shot, so that proc one. Volley also has changed to just be a passive option on a 10% chance to proc and then AoEs. And careful aim, aim shot has a 50% chance to deal double the damage on targets above 80% or below 20% of HP. And in this tier here, Streamlines makes your rapid fire fire 30% faster, or you can instead get steady focus for each subsequent steady shot to increase its cast time or even the old school Hunter's Mark to just apply a debuff increasing your damage by 5% and then grant 20 focus if the target dies with it. Lethal shots down here, just gonna add another proc on steady shots to make your next aim shot or rapid fire to be guaranteed crits. And against it, you have the new double tap on one minute cooldown. And when you activate it, your next aim shot will fire a second one instantly or make your rapid fire channel double the amount of arrows or, well, bullets. And lastly, Lock and Load is here, now giving a 5% chance to trigger a free and instant cast aim shot proc or calling the shots. Arcane shot or multi shot reduces the cooldown of true shot, that's a lot of shots, for three seconds. Overall, Marksman now is feeling quite relaxing. I think that's the right word for it. Without the vulnerable window, it kind of frees you up a bit and you're still all about aim shots, but between fitting your rapid fires, arcane shot or multi shot, using steady shot as a filler and the procs, or even though some might argue is too much of them, it has the right tools to keep you decently engaged in what you're doing without cluttering you or forcing you to do certain things. It's just nice, simple and fluid. Your AoE could be better, but it works. And now the Fire Mage. Now Fire in BFA has not suffered too much changes, for the most part it is playing the same. Just your talents changed quite a bit to include a lot of things that made it fun in Legion, such as Lego effects, and there in Legion went through some ups and downs. So let's hope it gets a bit more stable this time around in BF5. But baseline changes, the only one there is, is just the addition to an old ability, remove curse, and of course a removal of traits, but I'm glad to say that combustion continues to be out of this global cooldown rule. So talents, you get searing touch, which is basically your like a waste for your scourge to act as an execute. Phoenix flames, now here against flame on, which sucks, but they kind of do the same thing anyway, but yeah, in comparison to legion is an awful decision to make. Uh, Conflagration is now here against Living Bomb, and in the last year you get Pyroclasm, which basically works as your Lego Bracers, but can now 
hold to charges. And that's it really. So the Fire Mage for the most part is playing the same. Your talents are just filled with artifact or Lego abilities, which was the way Blizz found to make fire work is just to give us all of our old tools which can feel lazy, but it works. Now there are some improvements, like the pyro proc, having two charges allows for more options, like trying to get two and fit them both during a single rune of power window and such. As for the rest, it still is, for the most part, what you know and love. So even though it's at fifth, it plays pretty well. What's worrying me is that fire always been heavily stat dependent, such as crit and even mastery to AoE, and since secondary stats are not as beneficial in BFA, we'll have to wait and see how fire will play out over the course of the expansion. The Frost Mage. It has not changed much in BFI. Kinda like the Fire Mage, we just get a lot of our old abilities from traits baked into our talents, which feels weird having to take a talent here just to get what he took for granted in Legion, but hey, this is what we get. Now, not to say that Frost Mage is playing worse than in Legion, because even though plays mostly the same, it feels a bit smoother. Our procs seem a bit more stable, if I dare say, our chance on Brain Freeze is now at 25% up from 15%, and Fingers of Frost at 15% from Frostbolts and 12% from Frozen Orb. Plus our Glacial Spike, which was my favorite place of Frost, is far more worthwhile now. So baseline changes, the only ones that we got besides the chance on the procs, was the comeback of the remove curse utility thing, like the fire mage. Our pet no longer benefits from mastery, nor it has a water jet ability, and even the freeze no longer gives procs, neither brain freezes or fingers of frost. But the other change that now aided the glacial spike playstyle was the change to our icicles, as now they also stack for every flurry, not just frost balls, meaning faster icicles and more glacial spikes. Now talents again not much has changed. In the first tier we now get Ice Nova, which is right and kind of weird seeing it here to be honest. Uh, Frozen Touch is now 20% uh, more chance on Brain Freezes and Fingers of Frost, but with it you can get Chain Reaction, which was a trait to increase Ice Lance damage, but now it's based when Ice Lances hit a Frozen target, is gonna increase its damage by 3%, stacking 5 times. An easy passive option. And then Ebon Bolt also made its way here and is working the same. Now a cool thing about it is that you can now cleave with Splitting Ice, much as your Ice Lances and Glacial Spell I could do, wielding pretty good burst. With it, you can get a Freezing Rain, which was another trait to make your Blizzard instant cast with a Frozen Orb, but now it also increases its damage by 35%. Comma Storm is here as well to keep them company, since it makes sense as it's another AoE ability. Uh, on the last tier, you still get your Thermal Void, although remember Icy Veins now has a global cooldown. A Ray of Frost received a big boost, not only it's really bursty channeling ability, it also gives Fingers of Frost charges. However, not really seeing it where this could fit, it worked, but feels like the other options are better. But you do have that proc benefit. And Glacial Spike, which I already went over, being improved from Legion, so overall, Frost still is that very proc based spec that you know, and yes, can be frustrating at times, but still extremely entertaining. The proc Rocks constantly keep you engaged to mix in with your shatters, and the newly improved Glacial Spike build makes for a very fun time, especially in dungeons. And yes, our numbers are quite crazy right now, but I'm sensing a nerf. Don't base your main choices around numbers in beta kits. The Destruction Warlock. Now, Destruction hasn't changed overly too much from Legion as well, but the small changes that it had made it for me one of the most enjoyable casters to play at the moment. On top of all these new awesome spell effects as well that you're gonna see in the background. Now, baseline changes like Affliction, Mana is no longer a crutch on Destruction, Soul Shards is your only resource, and for the most part, it's a very simple builder in spender type of gameplay, but the feel of it is what makes it so much fun. Other baseline changes were not much, although a backdraft has now been baked on your conflict rate, only at one charge, but it's gonna open up new talent choices, which was something of a must in Legion to take. Uh, Shadow Fury is now baseline as well. Then Havoc got its cooldown reduced to 25 seconds, and finally there's your new cooldown, Summon Infernal, which is so much better than in Legion. 
Now, not only damages in AoE, it also grants Soul Shard fragments every 0.5 seconds, feeding you more Soul Shards for more delicious Chaos Bolts or even Reigns of Fire. Plus, talents improve it even further. So speaking of which, you still get the old Backdraft now called a Flashover for the extra charge and also increases Conflict Rate damage. Eradication is now here and was slightly nerfed at 10% damage increase and Soul Fire makes a return and is now an extra ability that you can cast on cooldown, mainly on single targets, giving you 4 soul shard fragments, so essentially a stronger incinerate. The cooldown is 20 seconds, but gets reduced by 2 seconds every time you use a soul shard. Next, Reverse Entropy just has a chance to grant you a haste buff, haste is always fun for destruction, and then there's Internal Combustion, which makes your cast bolt instantly deal 5 seconds worth of your emulate, which is alright, a bit more bursty. Inferno gives your brain of fire a 20% chance to give you some fragments. Uh, Fire and Brimstone now generates one fragment per target hit. And then here, Grimoar of Supremacy is gonna improve Inferno even further to make each Soul Shard spent during its duration to increase the damage of Chaos Bolt by 8%. In the end, getting ever bigger Chaos Bolts and then Inferno is just feeding you even more shards for even more Chaos Bolts see where this is going. And then finally, you get Dark Souls and Stability. Like Affliction, just a cooldown stat buff, this time to increase your crit chance. A crit in Destruction generally gives more shards and increases Chaos Bolt damage, so cooldown stacking in Destruction will wield amazing results. All of that said, again, Destruction is a very simple spec to play, you basically just build and spend resources in this very basic manner. You have the choice to delay or not on some Chaos Bolts, and choose between spending on Chaos Bolts or Reign of Fires, and do some planning, but that alone can keep you decently engaged. Plus, your new Infernal cooldown on top of Dark Soul and Grimoire of Supremacy can make for a pretty compelling gameplay, and there is some learning curve to take the most out of those same CDs, which is cool, even with things like Havoc. Uh, Destruction pretty much feels like the Fury Warrior of the casters. Following up, we have the Affliction Warlock. Affliction actually got a lot of changes, not only gameplay-wise, but aesthetically, as you can see in the background, with all these new sweet effects. Well, first of all, mana is no longer part of your gameplay. Life tap is gone, and you no longer need mana to manage in any way, shape, or form for any lock spec, so yay us. Shadow Bolt is now back to serve as your main filler, just deals damage, but again, is a filler, and you can still replace with Drain Soul in your talents. And Sable Affliction got its Contagion talents baked in to increase overall damage by 10% to the target while it's up. Shadow Fury has been made baseline to all lock specs, and you got a new cooldown called Summon Dark Lair, as this little nasty one eye monster zinc demon thing, where it will extend all of your dots duration by 8 seconds, plus its damage increased by 10% per dot up on any target on a 3 minute cooldown. So you finally have a pretty decent cooldown as Affliction, plus it heavily benefits from multi-targeting, which you are already great at. So on that alone is great changes to Affliction overall and fills the holes that the artifact left to some extent anyway. Now Talents is where even better changes comes to Affliction. On the first year, you get the good old Nightfall to improve our Shadow Bolt filler, your Corruption Ticks have a chance to give you a proc to make it easier instant cast and deal 25% more damage. Drain Soul goes against it to replace Shadow Bolt entirely and just works like your old one but doesn't self-heal, but it can deal double the damage on targets below 20% of HP. However, feels like a must to take in dungeons on that Soul Shard generation for uh, Shard sniping. Next to both, you get Death Bolt, which is also pretty cool, a new ability on a short cooldown that deals 30% damage based on all of your current active dots. So it can be quite bursty, and there's some pretty fun things you can do with it, and planning around with it to create ever bigger Death Bolts. Next, you just get Siphon Life down here, a slightly weaker. 
so the siege was nerfed to only apply to one extra target instead of two, so feels quite weak but broke its dominancy. Uh, Vile Taint is a new one, costing one soul shard, and it stays on the target, a wing all around, plus it slows. Another AoE ability is always welcomed in Affliction. Uh, Shadow Embrace to further improve Shadow Bolts or even Drain Soul, as it adds a debuff to increase your overall damage to the target. Uh, Drain Soul is much easier to keep this up though, due to its channeling nature. Haunt is another damage increase debuff, this time is on use but also deals damage on its own, but can be tougher to manage than the passive options. And then on the last tier, Creeping Death to make your dots stick faster, so again great for multi-targeting. And then another cooldown that is Dark Soul Misery, infuses your soul with the misery of your fallen foes. I know, super edgy. To increase your haste by 30%. All in all, Affliction is just playing better than in Legion, in my opinion. It's still all about them dots and managing unstable afflictions to keep up that contention like effect, but your new cooldowns really make things more entertaining. Not only are they fun to use, a lot can be done with them, such as experimenting with bigger dark layers and making various combos, then on talents that further is applied with things like Death Bolt. I mean, AoE can also be more fun since you get some new toys to play with instead of just be spamming Seed of Corruptions and wait for things to die to proc that Soul Flame trait. And now, the last one, the Demonology Warlock. So Demonology went through a huge revamp, so buckle up. So for one, say goodbye to mana as well, say goodbye to demonic empowerments, all of that crap is now gone. You now get Hand of Gul'dan, which now costs a max of 3 shards, which makes it easier to use, and of course you get the awesome new visuals, and it still summons the imps, but they now stay around you. Implode will be your main way to EWE, where you will suck all present wild imps to explode on a target in all that delicious gore. Then you get Demon Bolt as a stronger Shadow Bolt, generating 2 shards, but has a pretty long cast time. However, there's a proc to make it instant cast. How you get them? Well, through your demons, of course, called Demonic Core. When wild imps implode or expend their energy, there is a small chance to gain a stack. In addition, the Red Stalkers will have a 100% chance to give a stack of that proc, and you can have up to 4 at any point in time. So on this alone makes your summoning of demons much faster than in Legion+. Plus, all of those procs and instant casts makes for pretty engaging gameplay, but there's still your cooldowns and talents. So main cooldown that you have is called Demonic Tyrant. You summon this big badass demon, increasing all of your pet's damage by 15% and increasing the duration by 15 seconds. This will obviously be heavily abused by good players, uh, planning around with it on trying to get as many demons as you can before popping it will be your goal here, wielding amazing results in the process, both visually and just seeing this massive army of demons and in numbers. Then we get to the talents, which makes things even more fun. Uh, the Red Lash will add a cleave to your Dread Stalkers. Demonic Strength will grant your Felguard an extra Felstorm at 400% increased damage. And Bile Scourge Bombers, an activate ability costing two shards, extending a swarm of bats coming down from the sky to damage your enemies. I mean, exploding bats. Come on. Demonic Calling, adding a proc to your Dread Stalkers, costing one less shard and making it instant cast. Power Siphon to sacrifice to Imps to get two demonic cores, improving openers and your cooldown windows. From the shadows for your Dread Stalker to add a debuff, increasing shadow and fire damage by 20%. Soul Strike to get one shard every 10 seconds, on use to make your Felguard attack, uh, filling the role of Shadow Bolt essentially, and summon Vile Fiend, an extra pet on one shard cost, obviously combining super well with Daimonic Tyrant. Inner Demons to passively summon an Imp every 12 seconds seconds for free or have a small chance to summon a random demon and some pretty crazy shit can come out of there. Uh, your grimoire is now only a fell guard, which is okay, but I would like to have a choice to say summon a fell hunter to interrupt. And then on the last year, sacrifice souls, a shadow bolt and demon bolt get their damage increased by 5% per demon active. A nice passive option. Or demonic consumption, where instead of empowering your imps, your tyrant is gonna consume them to become far more powerful. So more burst in the form of that CD. And then nether portal, which is also another super fun cooldown. Costs three soul shards, and you're gonna open this portal for 20 seconds. And while it's up, every shard you spend summons a random demon. So overall, 
demonology can be a complex spec in terms of its cooldowns, but also offers this high learning curve to make the most out of them, something that good players will take advantage of, and with gear will get better as well. But between your basic gameplay of summoning demons and your procs, to your demonic tyrant cooldown and all the different combinations you can do with them, all the choices and then the other cooldowns like nether portal which can offer the same range of gameplay decisions and choices, not only rewards you in numbers but in visual feedback. Demo <laughs> must be one of the best looking classes in WoW at the moment, so all of that combined makes it for a very fun spec to play. That said, there isn't without faults. Mobility, even though improved with your instant casts, can still be pretty crappy, like distraction. And target switching isn't all that great either, but is far more manageable than the Legion version. Utility, you don't offer much as well. Shadow Fury is baseline, and you get a stun from your fell guards and you don't really have any interrupts, unless you sacrifice your fell guard damage, but obviously you still bring health stones and, and summons which everyone is a sucker for, and how awesome is this new visuals. So anyway guys, that's my ranged ranked video, and kinda like the melee, this last choice is, is filled with warlocks, my last video was filled with warriors, but here's the thing, that was the classes that Blizzard put the most love into, those feel the most worked upon, so those get the higher rank. Do let me know what you all think about it in the comments and what are your favorites if you are in the beta or if you are from the future and you are in the pre-patch and you are already playing some of these changes. And as always, thank you for watching, remember to like and subscribe to get more videos like this and check out my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. As always, have a fantastic day everyone and I'll see you all next time. See ya!